Hello. Today we're going to talk about torque. So we have two goals today. We're going to simply introduce torque, define what it is, and then we're going to look at three equivalent ways to calculate the torque produced by a particular force in a particular case. Okay, so torque. What is it? One way to think about torque is that it is the rotational equivalent of force. So what is a force? It's a push or a pull. And a net force tends to make something uh, accelerate in a straight line. A torque, on the other hand, is a twist. When you apply a twist to an object, then if you have a net torque, then you're going to change the way it rotates. It'll have an angular acceleration. I said that, net torque acting on an object at rest will cause it to rotate, just like a net force acting on an object at rest will cause it to accelerate, move in a straight line. And people have trouble understanding torque a little bit, but really, if you've ever opened a door, then you have a good working knowledge of what torque is. So, think about when you open a door. The force you apply when you open the door is certainly important. But where you apply that force, and in what direction you apply the force, is just as important as the size of the force you apply. For instance, if you apply a force right at the hinge, it's pretty useless. It doesn't do anything at all in terms of getting that door to rotate on its hinges. It's also useless to have your force go directly toward the hinge or directly away from the hinge. Okay, so if you're at the edge of the door, far edge, away from the hinges, but you push toward the hinges, or pull the door so you have a force directly away, that door is not going to spin. So what's most effective? Well, you apply your force far from the hinge, perpendicular to the plane of the door. Okay, that's going to be most effective in getting that door to spin, or to open or close that door. Okay, so torque involves force where the force is applied, and in what direction the force is applied. Okay, so we're going to look at a particular case here. So here's a rod that uh, can rotate about the left end. There's a little black dot with a red circle in it. That represents an axis of rotation. So we've basically pinned this rod at the left end. But we're allowing it to rotate. It can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, so once again, forces can produce torques. Torque depends on forces, size, magnetic direction, and location, as we talked about. So the magnitude of the torque, so in this case we have a force applied at some angle theta with respect to this rod. The torque is RF sine theta. R is the distance. It's a distance measured from the axis of rotation to the line of the force force is, of course, the F, and theta is the angle between R and F. And torque has a direction. And one way to talk about direction in a picture like this is in terms of clockwise or counterclockwise. So to find the torque's direction, an easy thing to do is imagine just holding the object at the axis and pushing on it in the direction of the force at the point the force is applied. In this case, that force, the force shown in the picture, will tend to make the object spin counterclockwise. Okay, another nice way to do it is sort of draw a picture of the scenario on your piece of paper, and then you take your pen or your, or your pencil and you put it down on that piece of paper and you just hold that pen or pencil at the place where the axis is, and then you push on it in the direction of the applied force at the location of the applied force, and you see which way your pen or pencil spins. Okay, and it will, in this case, it will go counterclockwise. So that is the direction of the torque due to this particular force in the picture. A couple things to note. Torque is zero when this displacement and force are along the same line. And you're going to get maximum torque when your R and F are perpendicular to one another. Okay, so we have a similar scenario here. So we have a rod hinged at the left end, 
and it's got a string attached to it. The string's tied to the wall. And that string is making sure that that rod stays motionless, stays in equilibrium. Okay? So if you think about various forces acting on this thing, well, there's one applied to the rod by the earth, force of gravity. There's one at the hinge, and there's one applied by the string itself, the tension force. So we're just going to focus on the torque due to the tension only, okay? Just because this is just an introduction to torque. Okay, so we're going to calculate the force due to the tension in the string acting on the rod. We're going to apply the torque. We're going to figure out the torque due to that. Okay, so three ways to do it. The first way is simply just to write down the equation. Tau is RF sine theta, and then identify R and F and theta, and we'll go from there. Note that there is an angle phi in the uh, picture, and that's the angle between the string and the rod. And that will probably come into our torque equation. Okay, so here is our tension force acting along the string. And so in this case, we can say that R here, we're going to measure from the axis of rotation along the rod. The rod has a length L, so R has a magnitude of L. Then we'll put in the full force, that's the tension force, Ft, so F in our equation, Rf sine theta, in this case is Ft. And then we have the sine of the angle between the line we just measured R along and the line of the force. And we can put in phi for that. Okay, so phi appears to be something like, you know, 25 degrees in this case. Now, you could have measured phi from, imagine a line continuing off to the right-hand side of, off the picture, and then go from that line all the way around. In this case, if phi is 25, you go 180 minus 25. What's that? 155 degrees to hit the FT. Okay? So you could have written in, instead of sine 25, sine 155. But if you uh, think about what sine does, in fact, those are the same numbers. So I usually stick with the angle that's less than 90 degrees. If you want to go with the one bigger than 90 degrees, though, it'll work. No problem. Okay, so in this case, we just apply R of sine theta, identify what R is, in this case it's L, what F is, in this case it's the tension force, and what theta is, in this case theta is phi. Okay, so there's one way to do it. Here's a second way to do it. So we're going to break the force into components and then we'll apply our torque equation to both components and see what we get. Okay, so breaking our force into components, horizontal vertical components, we get Ft cos phi along the rod and Ft sine phi perpendicular to the rod. Okay, so we break out our torque equation and we apply it to the Ft sine phi component. And so in this case, again, we're going to measure our r distance from the axis of rotation to the line of the force. We're going to measure that along the rod, and that distance is L, so R is L. The force we have now is Ft sine phi, and then we have sine theta, where theta is the angle between the line we measure R along and the line of the force. So that's a 90 degree angle in this case between the rod and the vertical component of the tension. And of course sine 90 is 1, so once again we get L and Ft and sine phi all multiplied together just as we did in method 1. Now, don't forget, there is a second component of the tension force, so we have to worry about that too. So the net torque would be the sum of those two torques, but the force component along the rod gives no torque at all. This is like pushing on the door directly toward the hinge. It's not going to make that door rotate. Okay, so we can basically, we're, if you really look carefully, the axis of rotation is just slightly offline from the... Um, horizontal component of the tension force, but let's not worry about that. Let's just say the tension, the horizontal component of the tension goes right through the axis of rotation when you extend the line, and so it gives no torque at all. Okay, so the only um, tension component to worry about here is the one that's perpendicular to the rod. The one parallel to the rod gives no torque about an axis on the rod anywhere. Okay, so there's our second method. Our third method is called the lever arm method. 
And now we're going to measure R along the line that meets the line of the force at a 90 degree angle. So we draw a line from the axis of rotation, the hinge, to the string so that line meets the string at a, at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so there is that line drawn on this picture. Now this gives us a nice right angle triangle. The hypotenuse of our triangle is L. We have a phi there on the right hand side in that corner of the triangle, that vertex of the triangle. And so our line we just drew has a length of L sine phi because it's opposite that angle phi. Okay, so now we're going to measure R, not along the rod itself, but along this line we just drew. Because you can measure, you can measure R along any line at all that goes from the axis of rotation to the line of the force. And note we're basically saying we can extend the line of the force, make it as long as we want. It can keep, even continue to the left and right off the picture. Okay, and we can measure R's from the axis of rotation to any point on the line. Okay, so this is a bit of a special case here, the lever arm method, where you measure it along a line that cuts that string, the line of the force, at 90 degrees. Okay, so now we're measuring R along this line here, the lever arm, and we've got R is L sine phi in this case. And then we've got multiplying that by the full force, so F is FT, the full FT in this case. And then the angle between the line we just measured R along and the line of the force is again 90 degrees and sine 90 is 1. So once again, in method 3, we get torque is L F T sine of phi. The same answer we got in method 1 and method 2. So these are all equivalent methods to find torque. And some of them are just a little easier to use in certain situations. So it's nice to know uh, about the different methods just to make your life uh, life easy. Okay, so that's our introduction to torque and our uh, look at three different ways to calculate torque due to a particular force in a particular situation.